Hi, how are you? Good, Just how in are time. You? Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. I hope you are well. Yeah, we are doing great, Moth. How are you? And how's life treating you? Fantastic. Couldn't be better. Hmm. You know, it's amazing how the world is coming closer because of um, these webinars. You know, although yeah. uh, people have limited bandwidth for these webinars, but yeah, they can they can really get a lot of value out of this. So, good Absolutely. evening, ladies and gentlemen. We've got friends coming here. We've got Subhash, we've got Priya, Mahendra, Ashok, and a lot of other people who are attending right now. So, we'd like to uh, so just say hello to us in the chat, friends. Fareen, Amanda, oh, great to see you, Amanda. I hope you're well. And we've got uh, more people coming in. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Great to see you here. It shows your commitment to make a difference. It, you're here because you want to know more about what's happening to our best place on this planet, which is the Himalayas. And, and uh, uh, while, uh, you know, as human species, we will continue to ravage whatever that we get. But the idea is to slow down the process and, you know, enjoy as we go along. So, well, that's, that's my take on it. So, uh, you know, pardon me if I'm wrong. Um, good evening, Ayan. Good evening, Rohan. Good evening, Shalini. Good to see you here. We have more friends joining in. And Samya. You got you all geared up for the session. I hope you've got everything in control and you can hear me properly, right? Yes, I can hear you, Mohit. Okay. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, uh, very much. But if anybody has any issues, do put in the chat. If you if you can hear us well, put yes. If you can't hear us well, say no. So I know okay. that, um, you know, is, is there a bandwidth issue with our system or yours? OK, so we, we will have people. I think, um, Swamya, we could start. Yes, ma'am. Let, let me introduce uh, you first. You know, my regular uh, way of doing it is that I will talk about the, uh, the goal of this webinar. The goal of this webinar is uh, my friends to to make everyone and ourselves understand the importance of the Himalayas and to understand that we can't treat it like any other place in Delhi or Bombay or any of the tier two, tier one cities where there are uh, trash collection pro uh, processes, where there are systems to do things, where there are um, objectives and then there are key results as well. In the Himalayas, it's it's a slow pace of life and we can't be on fast track. If you want to be on fast track, we'll be making gross mistake because we'll be consuming that much. And when we're consuming that much, which means we're trashing that much, we're putting that sort of trash into the system. And it's already trashed out in a lot of places. And it's, uh, you know, it's heart wrenching to see those dumps and piles of garbage strewn about in different places. It's not, it's not impossible to get rid of it, to curb this menace. It just requires your commitment, commitment and my commitment to go ahead with it. So we've got experts to help us out all along. It's just that we need to reach out to them and seek their help. And Soumya is one of them. Soumya has been unconditionally, relentlessly working on uh, the issue of Himalayan garbage for the longest time of life. Let me introduce her first. Um, <clears throat> Swami Prasad is a tropical ecologist and her work has focused on seed dispersal and its consequences for maintenance of ecosystems and forest management in the Western Ghats and Western Himalayan regions of India. Swami is also leading the Garbage Impact Research and Awareness Program. She has been with NSI since 2012. NSI is a nature science initiative. So I'm is currently working on the impacts of garbage on human and animal health on ecology. In addition to scientific research on the issue, she's also focusing on generating public awareness and action about plastic waste. So 
Some is research focuses on understanding seed dispersal networks and modified landscapes and examining plant movement in response to climate change. So I'm going research the role of ruminants and seed dispersers in tropical forests. She examined the impact of fruit harvest on seed dispersal. Swamya Prasad was formerly an assistant professor at the School of Life Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. At NSI, Swamya Prasad brings in her experience with working on ecosystem services and has assisted with developing NSI's Art for Science program, leading the garbage impact research and awareness program training rural youth in bird identification to promote ecotourism in collaboration with Uttarakhand Forest Department, contributing to development of research projects and research opportunities to examine the role of uh, frugivores and seed dispersal in urban areas. Now, I will, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste her link, the, uh, uh, the link to her introduction, if you all want to go through it in detail later. I will paste that link in the chat um, uh, a little while later. And I'll quickly introduce myself. My introduction is very simple, straightforward. I am Mohit Agarwal. I'm blessed with four children, a son and a daughter, and two non-humans. One is a Labrador, and one is an SQP, African Grey. I'm a follower of Shiva. Professionally, I'm an experiential ecotourism specialist with deep love for nature. I help people travel to some wonderful places in Asia. I'm the founder of Asian Adventures, a 26-year-old travel company. It is the largest and number one bird watching tour company in India. The company is on a large mission to help Asian elephants with their corridors with WTI, free the Himalayas of plastic waste, and help small wildlife NGOs, and also save the ancient Himalayan shrines. My interest is to promote ecotourism in its true essence and convert every tourist to an ecotourist. That's my goal. And um, so the work is always in progress. And I will continue to uh, to move ahead as we go along. I will not stop even if there are challenges. That's my commitment to myself and to this planet. I don't know why I'm here. But since I'm here, I may as well do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, yeah. so so I'm just pasting this link for everyone to see and then they can open this in a new tab and then they can study it whenever they've got time after the webinar. So over to you, Soumya. I will uh, put my screen off and my I will go mute. You go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Mohit, uh, for the uh, very generous and warm introduction. Um, I should actually uh, describe uh, how the genesis of the garbage research uh, that we've been doing now since um, I think 2012 or 13, okay, which is linked to uh, the Uttarakhand Springbird Festival and which is where I first met Mohit. And we had these uh, discussions about uh, waste and the impacts, ecological impacts especially. And it was really amazing to observe um, Mohit at these events, okay, spanning multiple venues uh, in Uttarakhand. And he was setting um, an example by practice. I was observing how very politely Mohit was refusing to eat out of um, plastic disposables, which were widely used in the first two Uttarakhand Springbird festivals, not subsequently. And uh, and very uh, gently nudging um, the organizers and participants to uh, engage with these issues. Okay, it was these discussions with Mohit that led to our first project, uh, a research project, looking at um, which animals eat thrash. Uh, we did this in uh, Pangod, and I'll, I'll take you through some of our initial work and also stuff that we've been doing more recently today in uh, this talk. I'm unable to see the presentation. Uh, I'll have to, um, Mohit? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll put it on. Yeah, so we could, um, like, we could take questions in the middle, or we could, um, I don't mind interruptions, okay? But it'd be nicer to assemble them and uh, discuss them towards the end. Um, Mohit can also answer a lot of these questions. 
and as a practitioner he often has deeper insights um than theoreticians like us okay so it's um it's open to all of you i hope this can be a discussion amongst all of us okay who are here today um this um framework that the united nations proposed um, about a decade ago um outlines that you know human health and well being um is very closely linked to environmental health and animal health okay uh and the un has been trying to steer nations along the one health mission trying to show the deep interlinkages between human well being and environmental well being um when i mean uh, i whenever i engage with these policy documents on the un side i always uh, think i mean uh, like reflect upon um, the value systems that um, india was grounded on okay uh which uh, are rooted in the panchabhuta philosophy which again uh, you know kind of uh, outlines that um, to find that balance within ourselves we need to be in sync with our environment okay and when we are not in sync with our environment when there is you know no balance uh, with within the environment that we live okay uh, we um, start experiencing lots of health issues and um, uh, both uh, physically as well as emotionally and in our relationships with our immediate family and friends okay uh, this is something i think um, anyone who's moved out of a toxic uh, place like delhi i moved out of delhi 3 years ago to the, living in dehradun i live in a much cleaner greener healthier space now and that reflects upon Uh, various things i mean of course my health parameters also on my relationships with people and the environment okay um in um most of you know the tourism venues across india especially here in uttarakhand we are offering a get away from um the toxic city uh, urban environment so uh, that people live in in india to come and for them to come and soak in and be in sync with a healthy overall here environment okay uh, but nevertheless okay it's very disturbing when we enter a place we consider pristine or beautiful as the himalayan ecosystems the first thing we see is mountains of trash and not um, mountains of oak or mountains covered with snow okay so it's um, uh, i think it's it these these disbalances um within uh, you know the the relationships not just disturb uh, you know the the person but also have you know like there is like a, a radiating bunch of effects on uh, the ecosystems as well and all of that feeds back to both health and economy we'll just go through some simple things today very simple ideas i'm not going to go into some of the more uh, theoretical stuff we've done okay so we all have heard of how our oceans rivers and lakes are full of trash okay this is uh, there in media all the time okay but we have more plastic than fish in the oceans you have these videos circulating of how someone sits in a restaurant and and slices through a fish and gets a piece of plastic and starts yelling at the chef okay but what we don't realize is that our mountains okay and all our um, domestic animals and our wild animals and most of the food that we consume is also contaminated with plastic okay not just those fish it's not just those fish okay um the main issues here in himalayan ecosystems um is that most people don't understand or acknowledge that trash is a mountainous problem okay um most audiences urban audiences that i interact with appear to think that कूड़ा तो वहां गाजीपुर डंप में है नॉट इन द हिमालयाज ओके एंड ऑफकोर्स देर आर नॉलेजेबल मोर नॉलेजेबल पीपल एज वेल बट वॉट वी हैव द रियालिटी दैट वी हैव इज वेरी वाइड स्प्रेड लिटरी एंड वी ऑल अंडरस्टैंड एंड एक्नोलेज दैट टूरिज्म हैज ब्रॉट इन थ्रैश इन टू द रिमोटेस कॉर्नर्स ऑफ द माउंटेन्स एंड इन इंडिया वी सीम टू हैव वेरी वेरी 
little in terms of systems of management um, in remote rural landscapes to address the kind of thrash that's building up. Okay. Uh, there are two issues here. One when thrash enters remote areas, of course, besides the visual aesthetic uh, uh, problem that we face, we also have an issue of a lot of animals, wildlife coming in to feed on thrash because thrash uh, has lots of rich food often. And in the wild, animals have to forage for very long and very far to find food. And in garbage dumps, they find food at the same location day in and day out. Um, and in very large quantities. So they end up getting very habituated. Almost all the species end up getting very habituated to feeding at garbage dumps. Okay. And this poses risk to several species. We'll discuss this in detail now. Um, we also have an issue that given the lack of waste management practices, our forest edges, wetlands, village commons have transformed into um, informal landfill sites across the mountain landscape. Okay. So this thrash everywhere, it's really hard to get an, uh, a decent photograph of the ibis pill uh, in the Ram Ganga without some plastic floating in the background. Okay, most of our endangered, rare, exotic, charismatic fauna are today photographed with some thrash in the vicinity. Okay, it doesn't bore well for us, um, you know, as a, as a destination, as a venue, but as somewhere that people would want to come and unwind and detox from the toxic uh, urban atmospheres. Okay, it doesn't really bore well as uh, for the Himalayas uh, to have every image coming up with thrash. Uh, this is a survey that we did about four years ago. There's much more now, and uh, we surveyed all the the garbage informal uh, landfill sites around Corbett Tiger Reserve. Uh, my student Gitanjali Karlam and I and every few hundred meters you have smaller dumps and then there are larger dumps every couple of kilometers okay around uh, human habitation there's a very dense cluster of um, garbage dumping sites on the fringe of uh, Corbett Tiger Reserve there's also a lot of garbage within the Tiger Reserve as well okay this is what forest edges look like in the Himalayas. Um, it's littered with dense thrash, especially, um, you know, uh, river um, or stream gullies get choked with thrash. The steeper, the more thrash we find them. Okay. And uh, plastic has poses a threat to uh, several endangered wildlife here in the Himalayan ecosystems. We've even seen postmodern reports of tigers and leopards, which have had their intestines choked with plastic. The animals have consequently starved, gone into, gone on to become man eaters or become very weak. And it's very hard to pinpoint and say that just plastic killed them. But yes, it was probably uh, the trigger that led to a um, whole chain of events that happened subsequently. We, uh, this was a study that, as I mentioned, um, had its origin in discussions with Mohit and uh, he partnered with us. We worked uh, with him very closely to design and deploy this study uh, in Pangol. Uh, I think this is the first such study uh, from India, from terrestrial ecosystems. It's also probably the first such study globally from terrestrial ecosystems to document uh, animal visitations at garbage dumps. This is not a problem restricted to India. Uh, I've seen uh, similar issues across multiple locations uh, in Asia and Africa as well. Okay, But very rarely do we bother trying to find out what's happening in our backyards. Okay? And very rarely are we honest enough to try and address what's happening in our backyards. Uh, Nana Devi uh, Bird Conservation Reserve is an incredible oak forest landscape. And Panbot a very, very small village. It has just 17 households, had just 17 households when we worked there about six years ago, and 11 resorts. Okay. Um, and uh, the source of garbage uh, was mainly linked to tourism and the resorts as well as the households. Okay. There was one large dumping site uh, in the village along a steep um, riverine gully. There were many small dumping sites behind uh, uh, almost every resort and also some uh, residences. Okay. Only one resort, um, Jangalore, was segregating its waste. 
and the others had no systems of waste management when we uh, did our work. Okay. Uh, we monitored the large dumping site, the common village uh, dumping site, plus the um, location where kitchen waste, just segregated kitchen waste without any plastic or hazardous materials, um, which was being used at jungle low. So we monitored two sites. One was a site which was very large, which had um, unsegregated waste, and another was a site, site which just had kitchen waste. Okay. And I'll just outline some of the results we had very briefly, our findings very, very briefly, okay? So we uh, we were watching animals through the day using simple binoculars and very standard uh, ecological techniques called focal and scan sampling, okay? And for nocturnal visitation, we were using camera traps. We also carried out very simple experiments using trash found at the site. We didn't uh, introduce any garbage. And we packed it in a plastic bag found at the site itself, at the landfill site itself, and tried to mimic the way in which the kitchen waste is typically disposed. That is by packing it in a plastic bag and flinging it into the landfill site, Okay, which is what we commonly do. We wanted to identify which animals try to tear open this bag of kitchen waste. Okay. So the two kinds of things we did, we tried to monitor animal visitation using standard techniques. Then we also set up an experiment to see what happens to bags of kitchen waste that are flung into the landfill site. Okay. We found that um, like um, animals with hands like asno, uh, the monkeys, the langur and the macaque, okay, were, could open up um, the trash bags, okay, or um, cartons and they could even the last bit of chips in that lace packet they could retrieve it they could drink that last sip of juice out of the fruity packet okay we never really seen um monkeys either the langur or the macaques actually ingesting plastic okay though they spend a lot of time touching plastic coming in contact with plastic we never seen them ingesting plastic okay we call these animals the handlers because they have good uh, hands like us that can help them retrieve food out of plastic. Okay. On the other hand, we also observed almost all the birds come down to the large landfill site. Some of them also came down to the compost pit, a jungle lower. And uh, mo the birds we observed, the insectivorous birds in temperate forests, they were very good at picking through the leaf litter and plastic, looking for bits of food or insects. Again, we never never really observed any of these insectivorous birds, the passerines, especially none of them. We ne never observed them uh, ingesting plastic, never, okay, even uh, subsequently in other sites that we carried out the same studies, okay. But we had um, another category of animals that we called the gulpers, okay, and compared to the handlers or the peckers, these animals don't have specialized beaks, okay, which can like see through um, leaf litter or plastic. They don't have hands like us that can help them retrieve food from plastic. They have, um, they mostly depend upon a large wide mouth to just gulp food, okay? And the stomach does the rest of the work. Now, uh, this includes most of the carnivores. Carnivores are like, you know, your tiger, leopard, dogs, cats, um, family, um, as well as bears and mongooses and martens, just about everybody, um, the, even bear, uh, like, fits in the, uh, uh, all the carnivores fit into the gulper category, okay? We also have another uh, very uh, concerning group of animals here in the gulpers category, which is the ruminants. This includes both the domestic ruminants like cows and buffaloes and the deer, as well as higher altitude ruminants like the antelopes and um, the goat antelopes like goral and thar, all of these uh, frequent garbage and they have very limited capability of pulling out food from plastic. Among birds, the most uh, concerning groups are these diving birds with wide beaks that go in to water, like the pelican or the cormorant, uh, go in fishing into water. They gulp in large volumes of water and also ingest huge amounts of plastic. Okay, the Diving birds have been, uh, across the world we're finding uh, very high incidences of plastic ingestion in diving birds, okay? Uh, we also have the highly endangered, uh, you know, the greater adjutant stock here in India. Uh, 
Uh, most of the population is found here in India and almost entirely now found um, at the Guwahati garbage dump. Okay. Uh, similar like stocks, the Malibu stock, okay, in Africa, and a similar stock in the Neotropics has again become almost entirely dependent on garbage. And that it, it appears that um, the diving birds and the stock are getting confused by um, certain chemicals, okay, which uh, are emitted by plastics. Okay, uh, this uh, dimethyl sulfide, which is also emitted by carrion, rotting fish or food. And um, these birds seem to be getting confused and they, they mistake plastic for food and end up gulping a lot of plastic. That's what recent research indicates. We're finding this phenomena across the globe huh, with certain groups of birds, certain groups of mammals, that is carnivores and ruminants. So these, these are the most vulnerable groups. These are the uh, biggest groups at risk. And even if you look at endangered fauna, these are, these are the most endangered species across the globe. They're highly vulnerable to plastic ingestion. Okay. So in our um, experiments where we were trying to mimic, understand what happens with that bag of kitchen waste, um, you know, which we all fling out of our homes. We put it into some municipal collection system. We've been working with urban areas as well, and we're finding similar patterns here. Okay. And, um, and that kitchen waste travels to the landfill site. And there's some cow there or a mongoose or a civet or a deer, okay, which is trying to access the food in there and ends up gulping the plastic inadvertently because it's unable to open the plastic bag. Uh, at Pango 2, we found that the gulping animals, the carnivores and the ruminants, were mostly resp responsible for tearing open the bag and for gulping down the food Okay, with the bag. Okay? Whereas the other groups, the pecking birds or the handlers, um, had very, um, they were, I mean, we have very few instances of them actually um, like leading to a bag being torn. Okay. Um, so we, um, when we started looking at this issue, we realized that um, uh, just packing kitchen waste into a plastic bag and disposing it the way we are uh, doing every day across the country and across the world, it's, it's literally bombing out most of the fauna out there, be it domestic or wild. Okay. For me, seeing a cheetah with a plastic bag in its mouth, it's, it's really worrisome. Okay. I mean, I get very, very um, disturbed by that sight. Um, having worked on ruminants most of my life, okay, I worked on how these animals disperse seeds. I understand the way their stomachs and digestive systems work. Okay. And from what we understand, know that, um, you know, they're given the this, they have a four-chambered stomach and, and plastic just cannot get out once it enters the bellies of cows or deer. Okay, it's there forever and it's going to go on to kill them. Um, we'll, we'll discuss this in a bit. Okay, so um, let's just try to contemplate and reflect upon how plastic is affecting animals Okay, in our own backyard not in marine ecosystems or in some other country. This is right in our own backyards here in the Himalayas um, in urban and rural settings. Okay. We have uh, issues of entanglement. This is very routine even here. We, uh, I'm sure many of you worked in wildlife areas or even urban areas. We have this issue of nesting entangle entanglement entanglement with manja and other threats. Okay. Uh, I'm often having to go and rescue birds here in Dehradun as well. Okay. It's a very, very serious issue. We're losing lots of birds to nest entanglement. Okay. We also, from marine research is much more intense than terrestrial research. Okay. Gitanjali and I are, I think, among the few terrestrial garbage ecologists. Okay. And uh, from marine research, we know that a majority of species are carrying plastic in their bellies and um, a huge proportion of uh, reptiles, tortoises and turtles are carrying plastic um, on their carapace okay, or their feet. Okay. Several birds and mammals also have a permanent plastic entanglement okay, in the adult uh, stages. Okay. Um, so it's not 
It's not surprising when we see images like this. Of course, this what captures global and media attention in terms of whales, what, you know, coming onto the shore with bellies full of plastic, or this albatross dying on a remote island, a bird that had never entered any human scape, okay, with its belly full of plastic. But we somehow seem to forget what's happening in our own backyard. There's so many elephants dying here in Uttarakhand as well from plastic ingestion. Though, of course, somehow uh, it's only Kerala that seems to acknowledge that plastic is a killer. Okay. In Uttarakhand, Gitanjali is finding that up to 70% of plastic dung has plastic, uh, I mean, elephant dung has plastic in it. Uh, and we should start calling it plastic dung, actually. And uh, we're just about to send off this manuscript for publication. Uh, very depressing results. Uh, we, uh, what we also seem to forget is the sight that we see the minute we step out of our homes anywhere in urban India or in anywhere in rural India, anywhere, okay, in, from step out of any resort in the corporate, corporate landscape. And this is the first thing you will see, uh, livestock foraging at a garbage dump. Okay. And uh, so thus it's not surprising that 90% of our cows and buffaloes have plastic in their stomach. Uh, we're retrieving 100 plus kgs of plastic, mostly plastic bags from the stomachs of cows. Okay. When we open them up. And the reason I'm telling you about the cows is because one, of course, um, the milk that the cows are producing in India is super toxic. And it's really concerning to have to having to feed that to our children. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, what we see for domestic ruminants like cows and buffaloes is, is the same that's happening in wild ruminants. It's very hard to measure this for wild animals, but we having, we, uh, have some estimates that show that similar amounts of plastic ingestions, similarly hundreds of kilos of plastic are stuck in bellies of cheetal and sambar and other deer and antelope across India. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, given this very complex, um, stomach that uh, these animals have the plastic just gets stuck here in the four stomach and cannot move beyond the four stomach because you see the dung of cow it's very fine there's a very fine particle size mesh that controls the movement of larger food particles from the four stomach to the mid stomach okay so because plastic can't be digested by the bacteria in the four stomach uh, it doesn't get ground down to smaller particle size. It doesn't move beyond the four stomach, gets stuck there and starts forming these very uh, uh, large tumor structures, which are very painful. And they end up having the lifespan of the animal. Uh, and for cow and buffalo owners, it also ends up um, like uh, leading them to lots of losses due to lower milk and dung yields. Okay. So, this uh, is no ilaj nahi hai other than a surgery, which is uh, a very um, difficult surgery and most animals don't survive. Okay. Um, and, um, well, we could just um, segregate waste, uh, separate the food waste from other categories of waste. And even if we don't want to compost the food waste, suppose we don't have facilities in our home or uh, resort to compost the food waste, at least leave the food waste in a place where animals can come and feed on them safely without plastic and other ha hazardous materials being present. In. Okay. Um, this is what we've done traditionally across millennia in India, leaving out food for livestock and wild animals, crows, whatnot. Okay. But today, um, I mean, uh, it's really worrisome. I was at, um, a death ceremony in Bangalore uh, some years ago, and I saw the offering being packed in a plastic bag and left on the roof for the crows to come down and pick. Okay, so as a nation, we seem to have forgotten that you can leave food out as it is without wrapping it in plastic or uh, throwing it out with some plastic or syringes or whatever it is. Okay, um, so for heaven's sake, let's try. Let's try to address this wherever we are. Okay, every day in our lives, um, it can go on to impact the lives of thousands of animals. Okay, um, 364 days into how many ever years um, can matter to many, many thousand animals. Okay, um, here I would really um, like to ask Mohit to come in and give us insights on what it is like to address waste segregation within, you know, um, 
a resort, small to large complex. I know he's uh, done this and it's very challenging. I would really like him to give us insights on this. Thank you, Soumya. It was, uh, it's been a fantastic uh, um, slideshow that you've been giving. And uh, it's, yes, it, there are many struggles when it comes to aligning people. And uh, the approach that I took was that, you know, being the owner of um, uh, these couple of resorts that I have, um, I started to talk to them. And then I saw that it wasn't happening. It wasn't part of my SOPs because uh, my SOPs were failing. You know, the, the standard operating procedures didn't work because uh, they said, okay, the boss wants it like this, but the idea is to take the garbage and put it somewhere else. So how much ever education, uh, you know, you might impart or whatever you do, it doesn't really work like that. There's a sense of inclusivity, there's a sense of oneness that, you know, it's the, so it's like how uh, these yogis talk, you know, that this is the same breath that any animal exhales is what you inhale and what you exhale is what they inhale. So it's about understanding that without them, your survival is at stake. And whatever that you're doing is not just for the animals, it's for the humans as well. And your, if your um, water cha channels get uh, clogged, or um, let's say you, you're putting so much trash on the ground where nothing else can grow, you know, you're going to cut down your own opportunities. So, so, so many, many different angles, uh, many different um, approaches we had to take. And then finally, to be able to get our teams to acknowledge it and to be with us and not take shortcuts um, start to happen. You know, finally it started to happen and they started to do things themselves. But the point is that it's, you can get started at your own place, right? Yeah, it's your own, it's like you have a classroom of children and you're, you're teaching them and you're making them go from one class to another. So that was fine. But at the end of it, it needed to be expounded. It needed to go out to people. And, um, and that was the biggest challenge. But you know, there's, there have been some breakthroughs recently where uh, the, uh, the, the hoteliers in Pangot came together and formed an association. And they started to, uh, so, so, so they're trying to be very active and they're trying to take up this matter. And they, but we still don't have uh, an expert like you there right now will say, okay, this month, this is what we're going to do. Next month, this is what we're going to do. You know, so they are only right now talking about keeping things under control. And that will not last for very long. Because if you don't have uh, your progress from point A to point B, the entire project will come to standstill again. And then we'll start to, so for example, if, if we've got garbage and we've segregated and we've sort of piled it up and then you know, uh, once a month, the vehicle goes down to uh, uh, Haldwani where there's supposedly some sort of incinerator or compactor is working, you know, where we, we give it out. And there then we have to grapple with the government system because they will not just take any sack of yours like that. You know, so you'll have to use different ways of giving it to them. And then they say, we don't know what you're giving it to, you know, what you're giving us, you know, whether it's actually trash or it's something else, you know. So all of that, anyway, so so we managed to go through that. Then we also engaged the local Kabadiwalas and people and, you know, uh, how it's going to be done. But there were other issues with uh, lots of other kind of plastic, which uh, PWD is supposed to take for, for road construction. You know, so here I'm talking about point B. So point A is one challenge to put everybody uh, to bring everybody together as a Sangha and mm -hmm. do things together. And the second part is that once you've done it, what do you do with it? You know, so either you follow eco freaks and you say, okay, you start filling up bottles with plastic and you start making benches out of it, or you, you know, you give it out to PWT or where, where are the compactors, where are the incinerators and where are those things or whether, whether in, we really need incinerators, all of that. Mm -hmm. Then the then reduction and uh, you know how do you reduce 
what do you do you know what sort of safety standards let's say if you if you say okay i'll i'll open up a bhujia shop and a, and i'll bake bread for you you know do you need a fss ai approval to run that show you know or or will fss ai go only to um, to big companies that will package it properly and then send it back to you you know so so there are lots of these struggles that we have to address but i'm saying that these struggles don't stop us from doing yeah. what we're supposed to be doing correct because these yeah. are the problems that we have only created so where do we lower the demand and where do we lower that supply and increase the supply are the balances that we need to draw yeah i think everywhere um, where we try to build um, local economic chains where we source locally and sell locally okay um not only do we strengthen economies but we also strengthen ecologies in very uh, serious ways okay um so trying to work now with systematically with the uttarakhand forest department uh, given that dr rajiv patri is now at the helm to address sustainability measures um, across the state and um, hopefully some of the policy pushes that he's trying to get through we will see that come into action in the next few months okay with respect to um production of local um food and snacks okay um at least within the forest department um, to restriction okay so uh as you know as long as we continue to feed healthy feed to cows this is i mean something that a 5 year old can explain we will get healthy milk and if we uh, if our cows are feeding on plastic obviously most of india's milk is super toxic okay now um, what is this toxic stuff in plastic okay my see i have to admit my father um, you know ran an industry uh, plastics industry fiberglass industry for 33 years okay and um, you really can't make any kind of plastic without these additives okay phthalates or bpa or some replacements for these the plastic polymer itself the main plastic chemical itself is inert it's not toxic but without these additives you can't give it shape or flexibility or color or transparency okay um for example bpa is added to bring in greater flexibility so most of your medical tubing is about 50% bpa okay and um without these you really can't have usable plastics and these additives are mostly world war 2 by products they um they were never meant for human use and is super toxic to us okay so let's just understand what what's happening out here and why we need to be concerned okay i think this is this is stuff that uh, very few people in india are aware about uh, though across globally uh, like it, i mean especially people from the western world are very aware about these things in india at least now we are having conversations about microplastics microplastics yes it's a serious concern but they're not as serious a risk as these chemical additives that are there in plastic which which are deadly for us okay now just take a look at all the stuff which is on your screens um this is what we use every day in our homes okay um these uh, cleaning agents like domex or harpic different toothpaste and biscuits and packet uh, lunch boxes etc can you tell me if any of these doesn't contain is there anything out here that tin cans out there as well as you see tin food can you tell me if any of these doesn't contain phthalate or ppa okay. is there something here which is safe for human consumption you could i mean put that into the chat box if you think there's something here that's safe for human consumption take a close look at this image i think unfortunately not okay even though tin cans are lined with bpa that's the shiny stuff that's on the inside of aluminum or tin cans okay um and um you know because in the us there's been so much legislation and legal battles about bpa 
which uh, is super toxic especially to our children um there's now products across the globe especially for children which is labeled as bpa free but these products bpa is replaced with bisphenol sulfide which we understand is now more toxic than the original bpa so when a manufacturer says bpa free he's not telling you what he's replacing that bpa with it is still not safe for you okay especially your child now um these um plastic toxins right bpa or phthalates and of course the microplastics leach into food and beverages stored in um, plastic uh, containers or plastic packaging there's been lots and lots of research on how this leaching the rates at which it's leaching and what impacts it has i'll just try to summarize some of that and this research has been going on for something like 50 years okay and um we understand that more colorful talk plastics are more toxic because they contain cadmium and lead and various other heavy metals to bring in the colors okay the more colorful the more toxic okay um there's nothing like healthy or safe plastic for you the labeling that manufacturers use saying that it's microwave safe just means that when the plastic thing goes into the microwave it's not going to disintegrate if you leave, read the safety manuals okay they're nowhere indicated that it's free from phthalates or bpa or chemicals that are harmful for human health okay we also understand it's smaller packaging chote biscuit ke packet chote wo pepsi coke ke fruity ke packets are more toxic than the larger package just because of a simple volume to area ratio there's more food or more drink per unit surface area of plastic in a larger bottle compared to a smaller packaging especially children these days um, in, in the north you have these ashtami poojas and various things and all the kids are being given these super chota toxic packets all the time okay instead if you just give them some fruit or juice or namkeen uh, it would be much safer here yeah? any day any day even with that fssai label this stuff is super toxic go for the local samosa you're safer okay um we also understand that when we leave food okay stored in plastic for a long time either cling film or these plastic bags there's a lot of leaching of both the toxins and microplastics and also food decay happens faster okay within our uh, plastic packaging okay uh one category of plastic that's styrofoam the white color stuff we known um, 1982 the world health organization recognizes as a group b carcinogen that is it is linked to cancer directly this is one of the types of plastic and now in india this is becoming widely acceptable people think white is clean and you serve food in it it's safe uh, unfortunately you don't know where it's come from how many people have touched it and um you also I don't understand that it contains stuff in it which can be very very toxic to your body okay there's been even research to show that you know touching these uh, laminated surfaces okay that we use uh, to wrap books or um, these atm for receipt folds people who are, i mean the tellers who are working at super stores and stuff are constantly touching receipts they're also lined with bpa and that's also very very toxic for you just touching these can lead to surface absorption of chemicals okay so um i mean uh, that 3% of plastic in your body that um, we now acknowledge is not just concentrated in your feet it's spread across all around your body especially in your lymph nodes and in your liver okay so um this image is a bit, bit misleading you end up thinking that 3% of our body is plastic and it's all there in our toes but no it's actually in your lymph nodes and liver and that's why it's so so worrisome um we also understand recently lots of news on this that viruses live for longest on plastic surfaces they're not surprising at all okay we know that you know viruses don't last for very long on copper say they last for less than 4 hours okay whereas on plastic they can live and breed for uh, at least two days if not up to six days okay uh, i find that a lot of small establishments around dehradun are shifting to serving in plastic disposables using covid as an excuse okay and they don't realize that it's actually a bigger risk both to them their staff and to the customer okay uh, to serve in uh, plastic disposables 
okay over a steel or um, copper thali okay so um we need more i think discussions and dialogues on this in the hospital hospitality industry in terms of what is a safer surface um to serve food okay um this um the, the, why are these toxins? I mean, let's get back to the plastic toxins. I was telling you about BP and thalin. Why we need to think about why these are dangerous for our health? Huh? Just a few minutes on this. Basically, these things go and block your hormones. They sit where your hormones are supposed to lock in. Okay, all of you know that you have these hormones circulating in your bodies when you're laughing or crying. Even especially as children grow or as we age, they control everything in your body from your digestion to brain function. Okay. Uh, and growth um, as well okay but they're found in very small concentration and they they regulate the body's actions um today most of us have higher concentrations of circulating plastic toxins bpa or thalate than hormones okay though manufacturers argue that their biscuit or bread packet gives you very little thalate or bpa overall across the day the total uh, quantity of thalate or BPA we absorb is quite worrisome. Um, study of North Indian populations found that 70% of the plastic toxins are absorbed through food and drink, okay, which is like packaged food and drink that is directly packed in plastic. This includes bread, chips, biscuits, maggi, fast food, water, juices, okay, all of this we just consume straight out of a plastic bag or a plastic bottle. Okay, now the results from uh, this North Indian study are similar to results across the world. So most of that BP and thalate is not coming from sitting on a plastic chair or sitting under a plastic panka. It's coming from drinking juices or water packed in plastic or eating food stored in plastic. Okay, this is very, very important to understand. These are things that we can easily avoid to address most of the health issues we face in our families. Okay, uh, we've known for a very long time that plastic toxins are the main um, reason for the growing prevalence of thyroid issues, as well as endometriosis and many other hormonal issues in women and men. We also understand that um, the rising incidences of male infertility are linked to exposure to uh, the plastic toxins okay but very few doctors understand uh, this research because biologists are working on this but they, the clinicians the doctors are not really familiar with this but now a growing number of gynecologists and reproductive health specialists are suggesting to their um, patients that they go off food packed in plastic if they want to elevate the symptoms okay but the most worrisome and the most startling and the most recent results are about the impacts that plastics have on children and brain development. Uh, we find that up to 90% of the umbilical cords have BPA in them. There's a recent study which showed that there's even microplastics being transmitted from uh, the mother's umbilical cord in the womb to the child. Okay, And that's, that's really scary. Because um, there's been lots of other research which has shown that womb exposure, that fetal exposure to BPA uh, is an only known trigger for the autism spectrum disorder. Okay, Now, across the globe, 1 in 53 children is being born with autism. Okay, Those of you who are familiar with autism know that there's no cure for this. Okay, And the prevalence is rising. In a decade or so, we may have 1 in 40 children who are born with autism. Okay, and it's mostly linked to exposure to thalates and BPA in the womb. Okay, not later, and um, it's uh, it's thalates and BPA come mostly from plastics. They're also coming from cosmetics that women, uh, young girls use. Okay, and you build up concentrations of this in your liver, um, and it goes on to impact future generations in a very very serious way. Okay. Uh, we also understand that um, exposure to these toxins in uh, the brain development age, the active brain development age, zero to six, okay, is, is seriously uh, endangering for the child. It brings in lots of what, what is now called ADHD, attention deficiency, hyperactivity disorder. There's nothing wrong with the child. The child, you know, it's not screen exposure, maybe some amount of screen exposure, but it's mostly to do with chemicals that the child has been exposed to in the womb and subsequently, which are affecting its brain. And this is very serious. It's very hard. It's impossible to repair. And we're finding 
now incidences of thyroid cancer in very young children and the prevalence is really going up thyroid cancer again linked to exposure to ppn tablets okay so this is something that all of you should think about for, for not just for your properties and you know from the the uh, perspective of running a resort or a venue but also for your families okay a lot of your guests may be coming especially if you have guests from abroad they're familiar with all this um, research more knowledgeable guests from southern india especially are, are very very familiar with this now a lot of discussions in southern india uh, around these issues okay and and also rising discussions in northern india we're seeing around uh, among the more knowledgeable kind of crowd okay so we'll just discuss some seven simple effective steps this is something i just thought of simple steps but ek baar dimag ki batti khul jaye to we can think of many 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 ways of addressing these issues um, in our homes in our work spaces okay so always i would suggest serve fresh cook fresh okay um yeah i mean uh, i hate um, restaurants that just uh, you know dal makhani out of the freezer i'm always almost always looking for local cuisine um uh, if i can avoid uh, the bigger places i'm almost always skipping them to go back to eating in a local um daba or um, or staying in a community run place okay um cooking food in steel surfaces storing food in steel surfaces greatly reduces exposure to plastic toxins also reduces uh, risk of viral and bacterial contamination okay um uh, serving in uh, glass or metal is the safest also storing food in paper or cloth is much safer than storing it in cling wrap or plastic of any kind don't serve a sandwich please in a plastic bag you can serve it in a paper bag as the rest of the world does it's only in india that we seem to serve it in a plastic bag okay please don't store you know everything in cling wrap you could easily wrap it in cloth it tastes better it's um, safer for you as well and for your plants um similarly i mean i've seen lots of uh, like um, hotels uh, address uh, water service and shift to glass bottles but now i believe with the pandemic again plastic bottles are on the way back but i would think that's that's actually more worse because we understand that plastic bottles are fantastic for virus and bacteria breeding compared to a copper bottle or a glass bottle which um, actually kills bacteria and viruses okay so um, as as we were discussing before that shiny aluminium wrap also has bpa on its inside cling wrap super tax toxic 50% bpa let's shift to cloth or paper for serving and storing food okay um you could provide um a covid safe kit this is what i carry in my bag all the time it's a very crude one you could make a fancy one i have a cloth bag my own napkin a small dibba and a tumbler okay the dibba also doubles up as a plate and a katori okay and i always carry my own spoon so if i'm standing somewhere and everything is being served in plastic i can always say can you please serve it in this just to be safe and also in the covid scenario i'm carrying my own utensils and cutlery and i don't have to take anything from anywhere else okay so it's it's far safer maybe to hand each guest their own kit that they are responsible for especially if they're going around for a safari or elsewhere okay that they are responsible for their uh, cutlery and plates um uh, which then makes them probably feel safer as well okay um we would again suggest shifting storage to glass or steel uh, just because of course plastic toxins also because of bacteria and viruses um we again strongly suggest that everywhere wherever we can like segregate we should take out plastic store it separately and as mohit was discussing identify pathways of where it could go and what could be done with it but first of course minimize use as much as possible then the next step comes to uh, storing it 
and understanding what we could do with that next okay i think one of the nicest options that's coming up is use of plastic in the construction industry okay and we have a lot of construction across uttarakhand um even in most of the uh, hotel and resort properties there's some construction or the other going on we're trying this even in our home right now we are like bundling all the plastic into gunny sacks packing it tightly and putting it into the foundation that addresses termites and seepage and various issues okay this seems to be a, a somewhat easier solution you could also like uh, like get a shredder and comp compactor and you know if you are having a large scale construction and use a plastic there is also a group in uttarakhand now which is using plastic in a very large scale to make um, cement tiles that could be used for lining it's not very complex to mix cement with plastic and use it in construction of various kinds okay um of course i think uh, this is a switch that i'm seeing a lot of um, uh like uh properties make um including the pick up five star places as well as community run um, venues recently in the last few months i've noticed that most of them are offering a bamboo toothbrush or some uh, soap dispensers um what i would suggest is if you do not have a sustainable option you can off offer fewer things to the guests and only if the guests are so insist on something you could give it to them okay there is no need to flood each bathroom with huge numbers of these um plastic items which most guests don't use or dispose very irresponsibly okay um it would be wise to maybe increase the room rates by a couple of 100 rupees to bring in better options it will give you a better branding as well for your um venue um a lot of guests at these days very aware of um, bamboo toothbrushes and um, um cold process soaps and all the other options so providing a better soap or a better shampoo um is is certainly not out of the reach for most venues okay uh again i think this is something that we we um we rarely consider um i mean coming to uttarakhand if i'm coming from delhi or somewhere else i don't want to be sitting around in a in you know breathing in the same lovely aroma i smell in my backyard in delhi okay so kindly kindly let's get active and stop um, leaf and trash fires um just just find whatever a source of water you can fling stop i mean we can work more constructively within the community to address uh, fires in our landscapes it's a very very serious issue in uttarakhand and by the way we are going to we're facing a drought right now in uttarakhand and it's getting much worse we are getting into a big fire season this year and um, we need to get prepared and uh, arm ourselves to face uh, the big fire season in uttarakhand which is about to start now okay so um like results from across the globe indicate that going plastic free as i suggested you know addressing the food pathway exposure um, reducing packaged food and drinks in just about 3 days you can start observing differences in your body the phthalate and bpa levels in your blood start dropping okay and um and and there are people that we've been working with here in dehradun through our regular interactions and workshops have noticed um, like fairly major health benefits as well okay so um it's not very hard to do in india thankfully um local produce is not wrapped in plastic everywhere we have local active markets sabzi wale har kone mein khade hain and we have access to fresh food even grains from the good old kirana stores which are not packed in plastic so eating fresh fruit using only steel and glass utensils and minimizing contact with packaged plastics seems to have fairly drastic impacts on health there is also research that shows that these changes could bring in major health shifts and um, subsequently economic gains as well because you're saving on the number of lost work days the amount of money you spend on health uh, issues okay so in the longer run going plastic free is is cheaper okay it's going to save you a lot of money and a lot of tension 
Okay, so there's lots of things we can do in our daily lives. Um, and if we start tinkering with our homes, we get a lot of ideas about what we can do in our working spaces. So yeah, let's open up this discussion and let's hear from people as to what, uh, what where they want to take this. Okay. So this this is excellent. Is this um, so, friends? I'd like you to um, to put your questions in into the chat if you want to ask Somi anything or if you want to ask me anything, and I'd be happy to to answer any of your questions and get um, yeah. from there. I know that it's uh, past our closing time, but it doesn't matter because Sorry. this is a mm -hmm. question of uh, no. This is a matter of uh, you know our survival, and we're talking about our future. We're talking about something which is. Uh, meaningful for for the future generation than for our own planet. So so how does it matter if we spend a few few more minutes discussing mm -hmm. what is important to us? So I'd like people to ask questions. Don't worry if it's a silly question, post it. If it's a brilliant question, post it. No problem. Uh, Chirag says, how do we convince people that it's plastics that are causing their health problem? Like how do we convey to general public? Some yeah. So, I mean, um, there's a lot of content floating around on um, um, on the web right now about these things. Okay. There's a lot of research, mountains, Himalayas se bhi bada mountains kade hai. And uh, then there are groups like us, you know, uh, here at Nature Science Initiative, we invested the last three years in communicating the science because the science is so hard to understand. We translated it demystified it, brought it into simple common language in Hindi and English that everybody can connect with. Okay. So there's a lot of content on the web. And also you could engage with groups like us. You can call us over any time. Uh, we can do these um, sessions on the internet or we can come and do these live workshops within your communities for your guests uh, or for your parent-teacher associations. We could do these talks and sessions um that bring in um like some consciousness into simple acts and practices um, in our daily lives okay. fantastic what another thing that i it's uh, what strikes me is Samya, that i could convert this entire webinar into smaller pieces and you could go through them and i could have hindi uh, captions you know uh, subtitles in it right and we have the Hindi content, Mohit. We have this this presentation in Hindi. We can share it with you. Yeah. Okay. And but is it is it uh, it's like in a video form? Are you talking? No, it's not a video. It's not a video. It's a it's set video. of slides. We don't have videos, unfortunately. Yeah. We haven't had the time. It's too much work. So this extra. <laughs> so so this uh, you know people are now not spending too much time reading because there's so much content available. Yes, COVID. I agree think that okay. people just want a quick hack and it's fine we'll give them quick hack no problem yeah. this is our journey this is what we're supposed to be doing yeah. so what i'm going to do is even um, this webinar which is such a fantastic webinar that's happened uh, talking about cows and animals can be one section then talking yeah. about uh, the health of the women you know can be one section and then you know plastic bottles you know especially um, bagpiper whiskey in the hills <laughs> now coming. Um, I feel that they all need to go together because I feel women reflect the state of the environment. Okay, when <laughs> women's bodies are so badly impacted, it yeah. is reflecting the state of our environment. Uh, Seriously, okay. the women and the environment they mirror each other very closely. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah Shalini says um, thank you for insightful session. Apart from construction industry, are there any other ways uh, the folks can? Um, upcycle plastic, for instance, I've heard these plastic bags can be woven into uh, thread to make handbags, uh, like what they're doing in Pune or some place. I think they, that's what going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah definitely, Shali. I mean, um, even in Corbett, uh, Waste Warriors, Minakshi Pandey has been trying to uh, weave rope and you make products out of it. But it's very labor intensive and very small quantities of plastic are absorbed into uh, such upcycling activities. 
Thus, we're finding that construction, uh, like uh, this uh, group which is now making uh, cement tiles with plastic in it here in Dehradun, uh, I think a 5,000 square foot area coverage would take up 2,000 kilos of plastic. Okay, so that's a very large volume of plastic. Okay, and in our house, we haven't thrown out any plastic in three years. We collected it all and we're now starting to renovate. We're going to use it all up now for um, uh, the foundation of a little toilet and bathroom that we need to build. So that's the volumes that you can use up in construction versus. Um, other activities hmm. so um so friends i've got this uh, poll here which says would uh, would you like to help if yes uh, it says event volunteering copy writing and content creation fundraising working full time with an ngo so whatever your choices are please go ahead and put that and um, uh, i'll i'll give everyone another 10 or 15 seconds and because i've got another poll for you and i want to get your intention or your intent for the next one. Because uh, Swami and I were discussing, I said, we need to do this more often because we can actually bring the world together. You know, right now we are about 30 or parts here. Uh, tomorrow we will be about 300 people and then we'll be 3,000 people and then 5,000. You know, you don't have to go anywhere and I don't have to go anywhere, but we just bring more value to, uh, to each other. Yeah, every action is important. And you know, like there's research, social behavior change research, people looking at how behaviors change. Okay, we moved from wearing to wearing jeans now in last few decades, right? So uh, people have been studying how behaviors change. And it just takes about like addressing 2% of the society to bring about effective changes, okay, across the society, okay? Because ideas radiate, role models inspire, Okay, and that's more effective than any kind of classroom. So every action counts. And when whatever actions you take up, please, this today in the social media age, please try to post about it somewhere on Instagram or Facebook or WhatsApp. Share your experiences, be honest. Okay, and, and that can lead to a lot of changes uh, in your immediate surroundings. So there is, uh, there's a, um, you know, there's a Facebook community that Soumya has called Do Not Trash. So go ahead on that Facebook community and give it more power, you know. Thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah. Let's all come together. And Fareen, can you post our webinar uh, uh, link that people can store with them? And then what we can do is um, call them again next month with, uh, with their commitment to rope in another you know if each person gets another 20 30 people and starts to engage we've got no money to charge we no, got nothing to uh you don't need anything yeah financial uh, there's no financial implication it's just that this is a service that we need to do to our planet we are beyond the survival part you know we we're pretty good with food now we've got our bread and butter sorted so what the hell are we doing in in this world so you may as well go you know, uh, one extra inch, one extra mile to make it worthwhile for other people, you know, it's and not be oblivious, not be um, uh, not just sort of be indifferent to this particular thing, you know, and I'm telling you, it's a struggle. It's not easy because sometimes you come across situations where you can't say no or you have no other choice but to drink out of plastic or eat out of plastic or promote plastic in some way or the other. That's fine. But at least be conscious, you know, let's just be if we really try hard, there are options. There'll always be an there. option. Always, yeah, always be, you know, so it's okay. You can go hungry or thirsty for for an hour or so and then go home and drink out of it. Or just use your hand, you know, you remember school, you know, and, <laughs> and that's the best time, you know, and then, you know, the water would be all over your, oh, wow, it was fantastic. And that's what we want to do. We want to do all of that. So great friends. So what they're saying is that next Himalayan webinar preferences, engaging communities for trash handling. And then also there's interest for training of managers and owners of hotels and resorts to handle waste. We could create a course around it yes. and we could then talk about engaging communities in a, uh, in a very systematic manner where, uh, you know, they sort of, it works like, uh, uh, you know, chain reaction that you train one community and the community starts to train others and there has to be, uh, you know, 
we could yeah. we could talk about that as we go. Yeah. So friends, this is always a journey. This is not something where we don't have to get anywhere. We just have to continue to move. Yeah. So go ahead, Tanya. You were saying something. Yeah. Also, I want to say that we are looking for partners to open up um, these stores which support local and sustainable products across Uttarakhand, wherever you're located. Okay. And there's some fantastic groups in Uttarakhand producing fantastic stuff. Which is not packed in plastic, without any toxic chemicals, soaps, shampoos, um, creams, food, all of it. Okay, and this could support um, the tourism industry in a big way. So, um, yeah, um, if, we, if we tell a local vendor in, in our village and we say, "Hey, look, you you getting all this plastic? I know there's no problem with that, but it's just that it's it's." Your business is dependent on this, and these people depend on your business. So it's mutual, right? So when you say that, look, I am into ethical business, and this is not what I would like to do. I don't want to somebody who's putting bread on my table. I don't want to put toxin into his body. Yeah. And if you can sensitize that man to do that and says, you know, I'm not yeah. going to sell you coke and I'm not going to sell you chips, but I'm going to sell you something which is homemade. It might be more expensive. He will actually end up making more money. And yes. It, uh, more um, blessings and dua uh, than anything else, and um, you know the ladies would love it. And if he's yeah. if he says that, look, you you gonna have thyroid problems. <laughs> you better be watching out. <laughs> yeah, the, the women will will take a step back. You know, I think I think every every which way there are different ways of looking at it. So. So yeah. let's talk about it further, friends. I this particular um, channel that I have uh, is uh, is more like a one-way communication thing because, um, but we could, if we have close community, let's say people who we know or people you you have the intention of coming, then we do it on Zoom, where people can unmute themselves, talk properly, and mm -hmm. not and won't be done on webinar jam next time. So anyway, I will I will roll that out. I'll roll out a system where all of you can get engaged and get your families to listen to all this. You know, tomorrow you're going to get the replay link. Store it, download it, keep it with you, or just let me know and I'll put it in Dropbox. Share the link. You can download it, keep it, and then as I go along, I will edit this. I will put it into uh, different languages for you to do it. It's my company is supporting NGOs. Uh, how we get our money is our problem. We will continue to do this for you. Yeah. Yeah. So shall we shall we close the webinar today? Yeah. There was some question about toothpaste. Uh, you can make your own tooth powders and yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's uh, you know. So if you uh, start to use fluoride uh, for your uh, uh, toothpaste, apparently it's it's not good for health. You know, it's it's. Mm -hmm. Not good for your health, but it's also not good if you're a meditator. Do you know that? Your mm -hmm. your 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 concentration of this this particular chakra starts to get affected, and there's a scientific uh, re research which has been done in the U.S. on it. You know, mm -hmm. so your pineal gland or whatever that is, to you know, it starts to um, to not let you meditate. <laughs> so the fluoride is doing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. So there are lots of such things that you will come across. And friends, go ahead and share. And then share your knowledge with us. Share your experiences with us. Like what mm -hmm. Mahendraji is saying that, you know, he's from the local administration in Mount Abu. And he's created a dumping site where he collects all the garbage. And the sloth bears are frequenting there, uh, you know, to the rubbish dump, looking probably looking for food or, or uh, of course, yeah. they're not is back and we're looking for the content. It's a serious issue huh? because um, like garbage is bringing a lot of wildlife closer to humans and increasing conflict. This is an issue across India and the world, especially yeah. with bears, leopards, elephants. And uh, we need to think of um, addressing waste management in a decentralized way, as in not to bring all the waste to one location, but to kind of you know decentralize it and address it within households and within properties. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, put a link here where you can connect with me um, and schedule a call if we need to go further with any of these issues. And then, you know, Swami and I can take it further with you. I've just put this link here that says uh, linktree slash Mohit Eco Netter. 
and you can uh, so, so you can schedule a call with me and I'm, I'm working on many issues like tomorrow we've got day after tomorrow we've got bird watching webinar of um, uh, Arunachal and then we've got somebody who's coming from Cambodia to talk about spirituality and birds from Cambodia then uh, we've been working with Vivek Menon on this particular survey of white-winged duck in uh, the northeast where you know we're finding um, money for them to continue with the project so so they're doing their preliminary uh, survey you know so i'm saying i'm doing many of these things and then yesterday when i was doing pangolin uh, webinar with uh, with people from malaysia it's amazing how you know how appalling it is to see these uh, uh, pangolins just disappearing each pangolin eats twenty thousand insects a day and Lots of these pangolins would eat billions and billions and billions of insects, right, which have been killed. And then you have bats and you have other uh, insect-eating animals, which if they were to leave our planet and go away, then you'd have huge population of these insects that will be feeding on your crop and your forest, your foliage, everything. What are you, what are we going to do, you know? So, so each thing has a huge niche uh, in this ecosystem where we need to look at. And not just ruined because you know we are indifferent to these issues. We just have to be, we just have to be involved. That's all. Involved. That's the word to do. We just have to be includes, inclusive. You and I need the same same energy. That's all. Great friends, thank you for being here and thank you for listening to my bit of emotional drama that I just get carried away. But this is where my heart lies. This is where I want to go. And I hope that um, all of you are here. That shows your commitment. That's a, which is why you, you're doing what you're doing. So, and then each one of you has huge amount of expertise within yourself. So come forward, connect with me, and let's take things together uh, ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, she's post some discount coupons. So in case if you want to come into one of my lodges, you could make use of the discount coupon. Yeah, we'll kick it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Thank you, friends. Have fun. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, see you. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Can I log off here? Yes. Yes. Yes.